Here are three essential exercises that every beginner pianist needs to know. These are super easy to play and they will literally 10X your playing. And if you're not a beginner, be sure to stay tuned because these are deceivingly difficult. This first one is ultra simple, but it's incredibly important and it can really help us start to build up our dexterity and our finger independence. All we're going to do is take each finger and place them on one white key a piece from C all the way to G. Filling in, we just get that. And at the very beginning, all we wanna do is just start at the bottom and play up to the top and back down. Now, that is like one of the most basic sounds on the piano, one of the most basic sounds in music. It's the start of a C major scale. And you may be thinking, hey, that's stupidly easy. Why would I waste my time doing that? But watch this. Playing the piano is hard. Oh, really? That's why even once you've got the notes down and you're playing them up and down and it feels like it's pretty even, that's the perfect time to take a look at how it might be deceivingly harder than you think. When we start out playing the piano, there are some things that are just inherently easy with our hands and some things that are inherently harder and the connections between all of our fingers is a great place to start to find some of these things now we have very strong connections that would be these three fingers those are probably the three strongest connections on our hand. They're very independent. They're the fingers that we tend to utilize the most in our everyday actions and how we control things. But then we've got these stragglers over here. Your pinky and your ring finger, or your fourth and fifth fingers, those are a lot more difficult to control and a lot more difficult to develop speed and dexterity with. Which is why something as simple as just going is actually harder than you think because here's the thing, when we play any exercise at all, we wanna to strive to play the notes as evenly as possible. So no matter what tempo we're playing at, we can slow it down and play. Even at that tempo, we wanna make sure that everything is as perfectly even as we can get it. But in addition to the notes being even, we wanna make sure that the dynamics are smooth as well. And that is really where the difficulty lies with our strong fingers versus our weak fingers. Our strong fingers, it's quite easy to play fairly consistently. You can play a very similar dynamic, you can play them pretty evenly. That's not too difficult for most people, right? But the second we go to our fourth finger, where we have much less control and much less power, now it gets a little harder. There's a tendency, you may find that when you're trying to play that fourth finger, it doesn't want to strike the key at the same level, the same volume as the other notes. Totally common, totally normal, but that's why something as simple as just going up and down the first five notes of the scale can be so effective. Let's talk about a couple other reasons why this exercise is so important. First of all, it's the first thing that teaches us how we actually move from note to note. When we play the piano, we're not just pressing buttons, right? We're using our whole hand. And then we also want to connect notes together. But what does that mean? When we connect notes together, how exactly are we doing that? Because sometimes what can happen is we get a sound something like this. Have you ever had this kind of happen to you as you start trying to work on playing the piano. Maybe you feel like you're blending the notes together. You don't quite feel like you're playing each note clearly and individually. Again, a totally normal thing when you're starting out, but this is why an exercise as simple as this is so important and can be deceivingly difficult. You can see one note being held out and then the next note is played, but where one stops, the other starts. There's no gap and they don't overlap at all. Is everything lined up? Is everything a similar volume? If so, great, that's what we want. And then we can adjust the speed and before you know it, you'll find yourself playing quicker and quicker. you'll notice as I got faster, my accuracy started to falter. And that's just natural. That's why we work on these exercises because we all have limitations and for everyone those limitations might be at different levels, but you're gonna hit your limitation eventually and that is why we work on this. So I know this exercise is incredibly simple, but it can do a ton to help you build up your dexterity, build up your speed, build up your strength, especially with those weaker fourth and fifth fingers. Now let's move on to number two. We're gonna take it up a notch. And before we dive into that, I wanna remind you there's just a couple of days left to get the pre 
pre-sale discount on the brand new Piano Jumpstart course. If you wanna learn the building blocks to like hundreds of your favorite songs, that's what you wanna check out. There's a link down below. We'll talk more about that in a bit. Now we need to start playing some things that don't all just go all the way up and then all the way down. Because after all, music usually doesn't sound like that. And these exercises are things that look like this. Very simple, only uses the same notes that we've been using since the beginning, but obviously we've changed up the order entirely. And what that does is force you to make connections with some of those weaker fingers that will help you build dexterity and speed. When we look at this one in particular. All of the same things from the first exercise apply to this one. We want to play evenly, we want to play smooth dynamics, and we want to play nice and connected. Especially when we add the left hand, we want to play everything together. Now if I ask you to just play that back to me, probably not too hard, but as we speed it up, you'll see very quickly the tongue twister aspect comes into play. Eventually your brain just goes, wait, 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 what was it? And you'll probably screw it up, but that's okay. That's why we want to do these. It gets especially difficult when you start putting left hand. You know, sometimes it feels like you have a really good session where you can do it really, really quickly. And then other times you do it twice and you've already screwed up, which was exactly that. But that's why we do these. We're strengthening the connections. We're strengthening the connections between our weak fingers and our strong fingers, as well as the connections between our individual hands. I've actually put together a sheet for you that has 10 of these variations. I wrote it myself. I'm sure something very similar has existed since the dawn of time, but I just wanted to throw together a sheet of 10 of these for you guys. It's totally for free. You can download it. There's a link in the description below. Check out that page and I'll send it straight to your inbox. I want you to take a look at my hand here. We want to move as little as possible when we're playing the piano. It's because we're lazy, right? And what we don't want to do is get any weird contortions going on with our hand because it's just going to make it really hard to play. And especially once you try to play faster, you're going to get this whole burning going on in uh, in your forearm and it's going to be very difficult to keep that up for any long period of time. Plus, for an exercise like this where our fingers are not leaving these five keys, why pick something up when it's only going to need to be used on the key that it's already on? You want to stay as relaxed as possible, move your fingers as little as possible to get the job done. Number three, a lot of you may know this already, but in case you don't, I want to show you some of the incredible exercises that almost every pianist knows and has played at some point. And that is, of course, Hannon. The Hannon exercises are absolutely phenomenal at strengthening these weak finger connections that we've been talking about. And the thing that the Hannon exercises do that's perhaps the next evolution of the two that we've talked about so far is we are now going to leave this position that we've been in since we started. And of course, that's good because most music is not written inside of five notes. Let me play just a bit of the first Hannon exercise for you. This is probably going to sound really familiar if you don't already know what I'm talking about. It goes like this. Now the first 60 exercises are perhaps the most commonly used for pianists developing technique and developing accuracy, dexterity, all of the above. And again, at that link down in the description, when I send you the exercises from number two, I'll also send you a PDF download of the Hannon. It's, it's public domain, you can Google it and find it all over the place. But just in case it's easier, I'll send that along as well. Now that first one is one you may have heard before, it's one you may have played before. And it's pretty easy. It does require some interesting, especially on the downward uh, motion, we have to connect fifth, five and four, fingers five and four, and that could be tough, especially when we're resetting the shape as it moves its way down. And that's what's brilliant about the Hannon exercises. They're all written so that they permutate themselves up and down a scale. And what I mean by that is, when the figure ends, it automatically puts you on the next degree of the scale, so you simply start it over again. And it continues to walk itself up the piano and back down the piano. That's what's really great about them, and that's why they're sort of the next evolution of some of the stuff we've talked about so far, because it moves you now away from just that one anchor point that we've been at. Here's where the hand gets really cool. It very quick, I mean, you could already tell just in number two. They 
become puzzles, just like we wanted to kind of create tongue twisters in the second group of exercises. This is exactly the same thing, but now like on steroids. And they get pretty weird as you work through the 60 exercises. <laughs> If every pianist just spent a little bit of time every day, and I'm not talking a lot, I mean like five or 10 minutes really, working through some of these exercises, you would make an insane amount of progress. Your fingers would feel stronger, they'd feel faster, they'd feel more accurate, you'd feel like you can play anything. And you'd be well on your way to being able to do exactly that. Technique is one of the more boring things that we have to talk about when we talk about learning the piano. And a lot of times it comes down to just like playing scales. Which, who wants to do that? I felt like that was always half of my lesson growing up, is just having to sit there and play through all 12 scales. These three levels of exercises, to me, are a lot more interesting, because we don't have this stressful pressure of having to remember all of the different white keys, black keys, the different combinations to play the different scales. We can really just focus on our fingers and getting our fingers stronger without having to worry about any of that stuff. And it's a great opportunity to make sure that we're working on the important things, connecting our notes nice and evenly, playing nice and evenly, smoothing out our dynamics, all of the stuff that we want to be able to do when we're playing this instrument. They'll help you get better and they'll help you realize that this isn't some mystical, magical thing. This is just something that takes a little bit of practice to get better at very quickly. And with these three levels of exercises, you'll find that happening in no time. So once again, use that link down below. I'll send you some cool stuff. It's totally free. And don't forget, there's just a few days left to take advantage of the Piano Jumpstart pre-sale. As you're working on all this stuff, if you also want to dive into the building blocks that make up your favorite songs and learning how to play, some chord progressions that will be applicable to literally hundreds if not thousands of popular songs, that is the place for you to start. And we do it all without you having to read any music or even know any music theory. Let's start out by playing something that you're actually gonna enjoy and that you can enjoy playing for your friends and your family. Be the life of the party. Sit down at that piano in the random stranger's house and start playing songs. Everybody will love it. And if they don't, you're at the wrong party. So anyways, get 50% off. That's the pre-sale discount. It's coming out in just a couple of days. So be sure to take advantage of that. Thanks so much for checking out this video. I appreciate it and we will see you in the next one.